Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red Valkyrie Presents. We finally got the Narnar on. How you doing, Narwhal? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And of course, I've got my amazing co-host, Sai. How are you doing, Sai? Uh, I'm doing awesome. How are you doing, Shay? You know. You know? <laughs> you know. I, no, it's funny, because you asked that, and while you asked that, I hear my bird out there, like, pleading with his little cries to be let out of his cage. <laughs> It's very that, distracting. No, just no. Uh, <laughs> I no, yeah. we don't. We don't need him loose during this. That would be chaos. Indeed. Uh, Turn uh, your camera just... cam on and let him loose, and he'll poop on your shoulder. Nice. I uh, only when he's really angry at me. He he's potty trained. He knows to not poop on my shoulder. Oh, when he gets nice. really pissed, though, he'll look at me and then he'll squat down and shit down my arm. I'm like, gosh, you're such a douche. Uh, <laughs> Look at Eric the Guapo says, free him. Like, no, no, you're no. not here to wrangle him. That's not happening. <laughs> uh, so before, before oh. we get into all of this, we have to do a cosplay reveal. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Sigh. Sigh um, sound. Is completed, sir. Shay the Red. Has now become... Awesome. Sai so sounds surprised every time I say this. <laughs> That's awesome. You're cave slave. I can't believe it. That's so cool that you do this for people. It, it, it's like, it feels so good to have someone. Thanks. Awesome. And it's, your characters are particularly tricky because they're so like simple that it's like, how do I look like I'm actually the character? <laughs> yeah. No, you did that one perfect. And you know, Vaughn, that's, Vaughn wrote that one, uh, so he would love it too. So I got to make sure he gets the link to this so he can check out Yeah, you being the, our character. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's fun for me to do. And uh, honestly... You guys, you guys do such interesting characters that it, it's it's a good challenge a lot of the time. Uh, <laughs> what is what is this? Past Master Dan says, uh, "Oh, so Sai is saying when is Sai going to cosplay? All the burden is on Shay. I know, right?" And uh, she's hotter as a brunette. Uh, do you mean Cave Girl or do you mean me? <laughs> this is like I've dyed I, my hair this color before, and I've had people ask me if I was sick for a straight month. So we don't do this color anymore. <laughs> uh, excuse me. You are gorgeous. Yeah. No. It looks Especially great. with the with the darker eyebrows and the blonde hair. Yeah. Yeah. That looks good. <laughs> it actually looks is good. helping me even think about the character. Like I'll draw her more like that hair a little bit, I think, in the future. I do like this hair for sure. It's just uh like I, I like I like how hers is kinda kinda stringing a little longer and, and dreadlocky, but I don't know. This is a cute style, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people love Cave Slave. That's probably the most popular from because there's a lot of stories in the book and people latched onto that one. And me and Vaughn are throwing back a little bit of back and forth on possible sequels or spinoffs for Cave that's Slave. That's awesome. Well, you know, it's that's kind of the cool thing about doing like a compendium is you can try out a couple different stories and see which ones people gravitate to and if they gravitate to something that you're like I mean I've got more stories that I can throw in there then you can okay let's see if we make this its own little spin-off series and see what happens yeah it totally is that I'm curious to see what 
people like. And it's, you know, it's all, it's like curated by me. I wrote almost all the stories, but Vaughn wrote one. And they're, so it's a little different than like an anthology you'd see on Kickstarter or whatever, where sometimes those I feel like, you know, you might find one story that you really like, but most of them you don't like, and it's all over the place because it, it's kind of like everyone submitting one story or whatever. But this one, I'm trying to just make every story good. And then people be kind of just comparing me to me so they can be a little more harsh, even in the critiques or whatever of like, I like this one. I didn't like this one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the feedback and see which ones people like stand out. I think Cave Slave and Robozan are two right away. I know people are going to like a lot and they're a little longer too. So I, I'm thinking about releasing them as single issues, like in, uh, in future campaigns too, as add-ons. Very cool. By the way, I love the uh, yeah. picture of you in your natural habitat. Yeah, that's another like two or three years old now, but that's early narwhal, still working at the deli. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I feel like I remember when this photo first was floating around Twitter. <laughs> like it was so long ago. <laughs> All yeah. I can remember is you standing in a chair in your pants that had holes in them, then dropping them and being in your boxers. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that I did there. I did like a show called Narwhal Late Night for a while, and I did <laughs> for a lot of it. And um, I, I privated all those videos. The Narwhal lifestyle. It's probably yeah. for the best. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> what what kinds of of stories do we have in here? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's there's three the three naked samurai shorts and those have all been printed in the sketchbook so it's i think it's like a third of the material is is from the sketchbooks and then two thirds is new original material and or maybe a little more even um and yes so i originally thought like naked samurai might be like this is the biggest one that i'm pitching to sell it because I eventually want to do a full graphic novel of that of Naked Samurai. So mm -hmm. this is a good start for that. But I've I've since got more and more into uh Robozan, Cave Slave. And there's another one, there's a couple horror stories. One of them is um a kind of cool one that's a collaboration with Mistress Manto. Uh and that one is uh it's like an adaptation of the Mask of Red Death, but it's kind of made from now perspective of nowadays and it's mm -hmm. instead of like prince prospero it's gavin newsom basically in california and uh and it's kind of like and the plague is just like covid basically people are forced to wear masks and the elites don't and their hypo hypocrisy's super annoying and so that mm -hmm. one's kind of like it's not really that much like the mask of red death but there's a lot of uh all the narration boxes uh, that kind of rhymes or whatever, or like mirrors it. So those from Poe are used in the story as it progresses. And that one's kind of similar of like a, like a revenge fantasy against the elites, basically against hypocritical elites, which is kind of what the original story is too. And that one's like sort of political, which I normally haven't done, but I was like, I, I wouldn't mind doing a political one. It'll date it kind of, but that's sort of the point. It's like, this is about the pandemic and being super annoyed and pissed, basically, that that Gavin Newsom shuts everything down and makes people wear masks. But then he goes to these big elite creepy parties where none of them wear masks. And swanky dinners where he gets his picture taken without a mask with 25 yeah. people without masks. Yeah. 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 So it's all about that. And it's kind of that outrage personified by the mask of red death so i'm excited that's another one i want to see what people think if they like if they're like oh the mess the political message is too heavy-handed or i want to see like what like a democrat or someone who votes for gavin newsom because it doesn't blatantly say it's gavin newsom but it's like right. very inspired by him and if they read it and if they're like you know i disagree with the message so i hate the story or if they're like i disagree with the message but i like the story or i disagree with the message and it actually maybe changed my mind a little bit something like that yeah it's it'll it'll be interesting i think to see kind of the where everybody falls 
on that because this has been such a this is one of the mm-hmm. weirdest times in life i think right now is is all of this like post pandemic shit and everything that has happened yeah during we- and is continuing to happen like two years later like yeah, we're still kind of waiting for the dust to settle. And I'll see like a tweet, like I saw a tweet once and it was like a girl saying, if you're on a date with a guy, just ask him if they wore a mask during the pandemic and then you'll know if they're a good person or not because they care about other people. And I was thinking like, no, you know, if they're like critical thinkers capable of discernment of of what's actually <laughs> happening in the world or whatever. And like, that's frustrating too, just like the the not connecting with people through a lot of that stuff. Yeah. I I feel like, I feel like the opinions that have come around on this have been so just in just wild. It's so crazy to hear what people think and feel and how people react and how people are, they're like, we'll just do it for the good of everyone. And I was like, you do realize that this is how a lot of regimes started, right? (laughs) It's the good of everyone. Like maybe, Maybe we have a reason to analyze things. I'm just saying. I'm not saying whether one critical is critical thinking or bad. Just, is no yes. longer taught. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. Just just do what you're told because you were told to. I was like, uh, I'm really uncomfortable with that message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a friend and he's like, I'm a good steward of society, so I got the vaccine. And I was thinking like, I'm a good steward of society because I'm waiting to see if it's bullshit or not first or whatever. Well, it, I I don't know. It when people are why why is that? Why do you got to have that badge? Like I just don't understand it. Yeah. Like all all these people it's like it it feels like everyone's constantly like vying for mommy and daddy's approval and I'm just so confused as to how many grown ass adults are use like if you if you want to go and and get these then by all means go get them. It's it's kind of like the flu shot. If you want to go get the flu shot, go get the flu. Sh- Nobody's going to stop you. But if you don't want to get them, then then you shouldn't be forced to. Like just yeah, one way or the other. <laughs> it's just Definitely. ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, thanks for commiserating with me about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I I I would do a lot more if I was uh, retired, but I'm not yet, so I have very little that I can say beyond what I've said. <laughs> oh yeah, I know it's funny. It's such a it's such a like crazy censored kind of thing but um (laughs) to continue kind of the pitch so specifically cave slave and robo's in as i've because i've been pitching it now for three or three months maybe even or two months but it's like it's a little bit hard to pitch a collection of short stories because it kind of all that the excitement kind of gets spread evenly amongst all of Mm -hmm. them and then so Mm -hmm. nothing nobody gets super pumped for one thing so I, as even that's happening for me as i'm working on it that i do really like the mask of red death when that kind of like ranked maybe third for me what i'm excited about but cave slave and Robozan are the top two and those are a little bit the longer ones they could get their uh, original issues released and cave slave's been an interesting one too because it's me donald and vaughn working on it and it's kind of all over the place of who's doing what because um like donald did a first pass on the art and then i changed how she looked so i redrew her on a lot of the pages and then so it's almost like this collage like you can somehow see sometimes see how she pops out like a different style and then i colored it all and then there's and then i changed the ending as i'm going to i added explosives and a lot more gore and it changed changed a little bit of like the kind of final (laughs) clever payoff got changed a little bit and so that required some redrawing of the of the art. So I'm trying to draw Donald's style for these like last pages, and I'm coloring those now. And it's like a 22 page, like pretty like high energy comic, pretty like smash bang, and that I'm really excited about. Like very like I don't know, like very intense. I think people will like the super intense ending that because it's it did. I tried to like turn it up to 11 or 12 from where it even where it was. And um, like even I guess I can, cause I, I can only tease, unfortunately, but like mm-hmm. the original ending is kind of her basically in front of a crowd, like holding her fist up in victory and kind of a cool badass right. full page thread of, of that. 
and like Donald drew a version of it. I drew a version of it. And that was kind of part of the version of the reason where I was like, oh, I think the ending can be like cooler than this. The ending can be like super intense, like not just her, like at the crowd, happy, like cheering, like it can end like way more like kind of like a, how a Kung Fu movie ends sometimes like it'll end almost in the middle of the action. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels almost kind of jarring. Uh, but then you get like that cool like shot to the arm of adrenaline from even just reading a comic. I'm hoping it'll do that. So I'm even trying that with the art and the coloring. So yeah, a lot of these ones, they can get a, a, not exactly experimental, but it's like you have specific goals for each story. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's like a lot of the inspiration and motivation. So like with, you know, Mask of Red Death is the political one. Cave Slave is trying to get this like adrenaline shot to the arm with the super intense ending. And um, Robozan, Robozan is a crazy one too because I had a version of it and it was 12 pages and that's going to be in the B-sides now. But I had been thinking, you know, that one doesn't have an ending. It's kind of a cool concept of an AI developing and it's represented by monkeys at a typewriter. And then the monkeys kind of, they kind of fork where half of them like humanity and half of them hate humanity. And it's like, which way is the AI going to go? So they're kind of going to, kind of war or whatever and so then the one the monkeys that like ai they send a monkey to earth uh with the fail safe to kind of protect the developing ai or whatever and so the bad monkeys can't get to it to like uh have things go their way and then it ends so the story doesn't actually end it's like to be continued but i couldn't really figure out a, a good way to like do that i was like i think the plot might be like a Terminator plot, basically like, oh, the bad monkeys send a monkey to Earth too. also mm -hmm. good monkey versus bad monkey. I was like, yeah, but that's just like Terminator. So I was just wasn't sure. But I was like, I do want it to have an ending. So I, I was kind of thinking and I was like the old version, it shows humanity cuts to like humans kind of developing and it explains what it is. And I was like, you could do a version of the story. We don't explain what it is, where it's just monkeys at a typewriter and they're all like murdering each other and fucking and breeding and then murdering so they're like you don't know what is going on really and i'm like that could be the story of just figuring out that it is an ai developing and so i d wrote these like vignettes to kind of like explain what it is and it ended up being 37 pages so it's almost like not a short it's like a one shot now and i was like crap am i gonna draw all this uh just to release this book when i already had a version that was totally going to work and it's good in its own right. And I marked it as a stretch goal, which is the 40 K stretch goal, which we might not even reach. But uh, two weeks ago, I was like, I just want to do it. Um, so I started it and I was like, I've been working like 12 hour days for the past two weeks, like to get this 37 pages done in time for print of this new version of the story that, so it's like, it's definitely, it's like the latest thing I've drawn. It's like, feels cutting edge for me. I'm really excited about the artistic process. I have a few collaborators that help me for a little comic jam to get it started because it uses some of the low poly 3D backgrounds. So it's some people help me with that using Blender. Um, and Sai, that's the one that this, so this is the old art and Sai has the new art uh, in the logo page that's just on Twitter. It's not on the page yet. Yeah, that so right that's there. the one. Um, in the center. So this is like the, so this is the version that's going to be 37 pages. So that's kind of one of the big pitches I have now is like, this is a good book to buy because that would almost be people have launched, you know, 37 page comics for 20 bucks or whatever. Right. And like, this is just one of the 12 stories included and, um, and it's going to be 37 pages. So, yeah. That's awesome. Sorry, I ranted there for a long time. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. The thing is, is I like I like when you get really passionate on a lot of your topics because, like, we've so we had you on for Foreign Agent, and you because when when we were first talking about having you on, I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about this one. And you, the more you talked about it, I was like, well, I have to back it because fuck, that sounds like a good story, you know. And so it's it's nice to hear when you get really passionate on stuff. And I was telling Sai about this earlier because I want to do my own anthology collection, um, hopefully at some point 
before I die at this <laughs> at this rate because I haven't even like sat down to write anything. But um, I have a bunch of starts for short stories, for poems and things like that. And I love to see how other people put anthologies and, and things like that together because I haven't seen... I haven't really seen a whole lot done well. I've seen I've seen a lot that are really jarring from topic to topic. And um, a lot of short stories that I've just been like, I just wasted like 10 pages reading this. And I like, I know it's only 10 pages, but I kind of want those 10 pages <laughs> back yeah. of my life. <laughs> like, And so yeah. I, I'm excited because I know how passionate you get. That was exactly the one I was thinking I knew it. of. I knew it. I knew it. It was so bad. It was just... Okay, just to catch you up, Narwhal, there's a guy who is, like, deathly afraid of bees. He comes home to his apartment, and there is one bee in his, in his apartment. And bee. And bee. And this dude, I shit you not, runs downstairs, like, across the street to a a convention that's going on a comic-con and he he buys a bunch of armor and a sword and all kinds of shit and he's gonna go and do battle and like initially when it starts you think it's somebody broke into his apartment like he came he came back and realized that somebody was in his apartment and he was like shit and so he went and got stuff to go and fight and he goes through this whole huge thing it's really like dramatic and he busts in and it's a motherfucking bee in his apartment that he is going to do battle with in full on like medieval then armor it was it get stuck in his armor <laughs> no that's that's how it fucking ended it ended with him busting into his apartment i was like yeah i hate they come, everything that's about like a shaggy read. dog short story and those are it, hit or miss those are stupid what was this? damn it but, i keep clicking it and it double clicks Shall oh, you click yeah. it? What are you? Is, what are you is this the name of it? Apartment Two B. I think it was. Oh, I think it was Past Master Dan. It, I think that was, the it was a story in a collection, and it's somewhere over here. Yeah, that's funny. But I, I it was bad. Yeah, but to I agree with you completely, Shay, about how anthologies, like the, the good ones, are kind of rare, and the one the thing that's helped me a little bit is, is thinking of it like as curation does kind of help i think because like you, it's like a, a museum and you want you want like paintings in a museum you want them to kind of like play off of a similar theme or play with each other a little bit as the whole experience you want to make sure they're all good hopefully and rather than like sometimes the kickstarter ones it'll be like like six sjw's and they'll just throw little jobs to their friends and turn in stuff throw it all together and give it to you and it's not really curated at all. Right. And that that's what almost every single one of them that I have that I've read has been like. And all of the stories have been where people are trying to be clever. Like they're really trying to be clever and they're trying to give you like a a hook or a twist at the end and they're like, "Oh, no one will see this coming." And they don't realize that in the incredibly limited amount of page space that you have to tell this story trying to pull off specific twists really just comes off as like a punch in the dick to your reader like it's not like a nice thing it just makes your reader go oh well if we were going to go through all of this just to have a satellite come crashing down on their car like what the fuck was the point of the entirety of this story and yeah. they're like but it but it was a twist you're like it's not a twist all you did was undo everything you did <laughs> Yeah. That's not good storytelling. That's Urinating bad storytelling. on your audience is not a twist. Yes, don't do that. And yeah. and that's I I'm I wanna see I haven't seen a lot of people who've done anthologies that is that is essentially one author, which is more what you're doing. And I know that you're working with other writers, but you are heavily involved in every one of these stories, which means that at least there will be a similar theme and a feel that goes through them, whether it's through the art, through the storytelling, through both, it'll all have that kind of cohesiveness of there being something in all of these drastically different stories that ties them together. Yeah, yeah. And I, I even did it where there's kind of like you could be, you know, the meme of Charlie 
from uh, Always Sunny looking at the board with all the yarn or whatever connected. Yes. <laughs> be a little bit like that with the stories. Like some like have recurring characters that wouldn't be, you wouldn't guess necessarily. They're like different genre stories, but then you're like, is that the same guy from that story? And so there's some of that kind of connecting it. And then, yeah, there's like, there's a couple Earthbound stories, a couple uh, Naked Samurai stories. So there's like the recurring like universes right um, and some so all that kind of stuff ties it together and on the subject too of yeah like sh writing short stories is like its own definite thing it's like way different than writing longer stories obviously and mm -hmm. the, one thing that i've noticed about it is kind of like for me i can't i almost can't sit down and do it like i can't sit down and write a short story it, you have to kind of get more of like the bolt of lightning or the apple on the head for a short story and that only happens you know, by the grace of the writer gods or whatever, like once a year. Usually while you're out doing something horribly uh, inconvenient to try and write yeah. down that like lightning bolt idea. And you're like, shit, like, okay, I, I know I'm mowing the lawn, but I really got to get this idea out. So like, just give me like five minutes and you just speak it into your phone memo pad or something. Like, yeah, like a I'll person on acid. Out loud so I won't forget it. And then people are like, what are you saying? I'm like, nothing. Ignore me. <laughs> Don't listen to this. Yeah. Jam Create says, I have faith that Narwhal will hit it out of the park. He's creative enough to pull it off. That is very true. Uh, he also said it came out on a Wednesday is a, a really good anthology series from Alterna. I have a bunch of it came out on a Wednesday. I haven't sat down and read them yet. But, yeah, I have um, the first one. I want to find it and read it. That's a good, uh, good call. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's nice to see like, <sighs> I like the idea of taking like what I was what I was talking about for what I'm hoping to do eventually is I really like the idea of taking my stories because I, I feel like you and I probably are, are somewhat similar in how we write where you have like this idea and you have this like message that you kind of want to get out but you don't want to tell everyone what it is you want to see what they come up with when you have them read it and so you're like okay I know what I want it to be but I'm gonna write it and then I'm gonna have you read it and then you tell me what you got out of it and then I might steal some of that because that might actually work better than what I was thinking <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah they'll get stuff out of it that you didn't plan and that's even like funner sometimes like the, yeah one example I think of that that I'm pretty sure this is true I kind of made this up but I think it's like, it's basically Boba, Boba Fett in Star Wars. Like nobody planned for everyone to love him because he was just a side character guy or whatever, but maybe it's just his design or his helmet or whatever. But, um, you know, he's kind of inspired the most lore and fan fiction almost more than any other Star Wars character. His um, armor was originally going to be all white. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be terrible. He was supposed to be like a That's really souped piece. up stormtrooper, and then then it evolved. Yeah, into him being a bounty hunter. That's good that it did. <laughs> well, the thing—I mean, the thing is, though. So, like, going on to the Boba Fett, um, like design and everything. If you look at the way that his armor is is colored, and it's kind of—it's still—it looks like it used to be at one point in time, like really fucking pristine badass but he's just has been through so much shit that it's just kind of haggard and worn down a bit and he's got this like super kind of crass attitude about everything where he's just like eh fuck it whatever you know like I, I do what's best for me and if that means that I turn you in then great and if that means that I don't then I'm uh, whatever like <laughs> as yeah. long as I'm as long as I'm happy and he has that like attitude that just sets it off from all these other goody two shoes and very bad baddies in this Star Wars universe. He's just kind of sitting there like, eh, <laughs> like yeah. in between. Yeah, but I'm always curious if that kind of thing will happen to any of my stories. Where I, it happened a little bit in Earthbound. Everyone loved Blogart, and I was like, I didn't really see that coming. He's like a side character with a few jokes. But mm. then I was trying to remember, like, what even was it that people love about him and it part of it is like because of the story and because of like his, his whole deal he has a free pass more than other characters to kind of say what he's thinking and say what he wants or say like say like weird dumb shit or kind of whereas other mm -hmm. characters kind of have to 
be in character like they got to talk about what the scene's about or whatever and blogart from the beginning is the guy who doesn't have to do that and so because mm-hmm. he's freed from that alone makes him like a little funner to write and maybe that kind of comes across um the audience and maybe the audience picks up on that but it's something like that yeah well and i i think that there's just whenever you create you never know what what is going to actually take off and what's going to be people's favorites and you have as a creator you have your favorites and you have your things that you really hope that people like and that is very rarely the same thing that your audience is going to latch on to like your audience is probably going to latch on to the character that either you hate the most that you have the least fun writing or the character that you have never even considered and you were just like they're just there because i needed someone to deliver a line and they like so they they came into being because of that and everyone's like what's their story i want to know more about them you're like fuck i don't know they're just back yeah. there i okay yeah. let me write a story about him i don't know what they do yeah i'm <laughs> super starbucks about, yeah i'm superstitious about that i feel like any story whatever like is the big break for you it's always the mm-hmm. one that you don't care about <laughs> it's like you're like what that one that's the one that is gonna well, like, we've we've <laughs> talked with uh with gibby so many times about his his series and his hammer of which and like series of books are my favorite i absolutely love them i love the characters i love the pacing and the action and everything that happens and he's like they're one of my favorites to write and they're one of my like they're they're the ones that he has some of the most rabid fans for but he has the least amount reading and so he's like it's not my it's nowhere near my most popular series he's like my villain series which is a whole bunch of jokes about a villain who's a total dickhead and then how he gets screwed over so many times, and then his like technomancer the brain, series. Basically. <laughs> yeah, and so like it's like it's like those two are the ones that everybody loves, and I'm like, I mean, like I've I've been listening to some of the villain audiobooks, and they're good, and I I like I like them, and they're funny, but they're not they're no hammer of witches, man. And he's like, I know, but they're the ones that sell, so I have to write those, and then when I have free time, then I can do the hammer of witches. I'm like. I don't understand it. Like it drives me insane. Cause I'm always, I'm bugging him every time he comes out with a new one. I was like, so when's the next one? When's the next one? He's like, I, ju- I just released the, she wakes in water. I was like, I know. And I read it. And when's the next one? He's like, yeah, yeah. eventually <laughs> I've got two other series. I have to write now. I think he's got like four other ones, but anyway, that's awesome. Uh, he's like, he kind of does what Brandon Sanderson does, right? Like just, straight up writing big epic fantasy series yeah of. he's all of his stuff are, are novels so like his hammer of witches story is deals a lot with um with witches and you know the supernatural and and things like that um and it's super high action really high drama and it's it's just really well written and then he's got technomancer which is all Right up size alley, you got like your cyberpunk worlds and and all that kind of uh, badassery, and then you have his villain series, which is um, straight up fucking crass humor. <laughs> like that's just really what it is. It's all about a uh, villain teaching villains how to villain better, and then getting screwed over by said villains. Oh, classic! I can't <laughs> it this time. Yeah, and and him having to, like, pretend to be a good guy and going, well, I know how this goes, and I know if I say these things in a pub that I will get these people to support me. And he's like, man, they're so sheep-like. And, like, Uh, the whole time he's just dissing on all these people that he's manipulating to try and help him better his situation so he can take back his realm that got stolen from him, essentially. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool your buddies with that guy. That sounds like... He's Dude, Gibbs cool. badass. I mean, yeah. I but I served with him, so you know, Ooh. that's that makes it easier to be buddies. We we were both in the same shithole. Been through the shit together. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I like what Jam Creates had said um, up here, where he was talking about it'd be cool to see a CG anthology that has big names, but also some of the unknown CG creators. It'd be cool, but I worry again that we were talking like the theme. There wouldn't be a theme. And while that's not, 
while I don't think every anthology needs a theme, I do think that that in a lot of these collections, that's one of the most jarring aspects is to go from a, a thing that was written that you're like, I really, really liked that. And then you go to the next one and you're like, that was really terrible. Well, yeah, having like, a through line helps. Uh, yeah. I mean, think about like Cat's Eye. Oh, um, yeah. How, yeah, how like the cat. Couple, yeah. Okay. The cat is the, the thing that connects all three stories. So it's like. it. Uh. Yeah. I was even thinking of like movies like there. You guys know the horror anthology VHS, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Like that has like that through line where they're they're grabbing these VHS tapes that they find in this old abandoned house. And then those are the short stories. That's definitely kind of fun. That's a good way to do it. And then, yeah, like the, the Coen brothers did an anthology that was all Westerns. Mm -hmm. And it's a through line that they're all Westerns, but those were odd, oddly quite jarring. And that was one where I loved one or two of them, but overall, like I didn't like three or four of them and felt half half and half about the whole, the whole anthology because of that kind of. Dame past master Dan. <laughs> See if my feminine side can word today. Thanks, Dan. He's, we have gone from uh, this to this. This is amazing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, and I guess that's, that's the, the curse of anthologies is that the likelihood that you're going to like every single story in them is low because the point of an anthology is to kind of test the waters with all these different stories and see what sticks and what people like. And usually you hit drastically different topics and styles and, and all of that to, tell these different stories and there's some of them that you're just not going to like, you know, like in my anthology, there's going to be poetry. There are people who fucking don't get poetry, don't like poetry, don't, don't enjoy it or understand it. So I, I expect that there's going to be a lot of people that are like, I liked it all except for this like weird word salad shit over here and be like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, let's go through your tears and uh, let people know, because it's, I mean, you got it pretty straightforward, but, you know, this is, when, are, when yeah. are you hoping to have this, like, out? When, what did you say, when I'm looking to have it yeah. out? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I just, now that I've taken on Rubble's in, I have to finish that, but it, it's going to go pretty fast, even though it's a lot of work, because I'm just, that's all I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think January, I'll kind of be setting up print files and ordering and probably fulfilling in February, which is what okay. the campaign says, but yeah. That's awesome. Even with that extra work, you still are, are looking like you're probably going to hit that timeline. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I shelved some other stuff that I is, was working on is delayed, but that doesn't matter. It's not like, yeah, Im imminent or whatever. It's not. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, going through the tiers for 25 bucks, it's 120 page collection yeah so there's because there's two short story collections there's i i think of it uh I've, one's called the b-sides it's, it's almost like varsity and jv like one is like me really trying to make every story good and it's you're really gonna hopefully like it's what you, hopefully you might literally like every story and it might blow minds because people will be like oh when's the last time i read an anthology where i liked every story like I, right I don't know. But then the other one is like a little more experimental, more like, <laughs> like weird. And that's one like everything deserves to be published. It's all cool, but it's not a goal of mine with that one to like make sure everyone loves. Like that one has one. It's like a a pixel art adaptation of Franz Kafka's The Trial. And it's like the first like couple, three or four chapters of The Trial. But it looks like a Game Boy game. And... That one, you know, like, I don't know if people are going to like that one or not, but it's, like, kind of cool. Uh, so there is some sample art, I think, of it. Yeah, right there. Um, Very so, like, every, every third panel has a little more uh, cinematic kind of, so it's not completely, like, the isometric. And, um, like, it would be, like, a cut scene or whatever. Uh, my buddy Jared did all the pixel art for that. So he's one of the big collaborators um for for the anthologies he, he's he did some art for some he's helped me with coloring some 
he helped, he's helped me a little bit with the 3D on RoboZan. So he's a good uh, kind of collaborator. That We have a big project coming out next year, a big graphic novel that he's like the art director for. So it's kind of like his art style. And um, we co-wrote it. And that is going to be kind of cool when that comes out. But it's still a few months um, before that really gets announced or anything. Very cool. Uh, Jam Create says, is this Narwhal's user, use your illusion one and two? What's that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I am unsure. It sounds like a Madonna album. It does kind oh, of, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? For my metaphor for musicians, you know how Bob Dylan, like it's famous when he went electric and some people hated it and some people loved it kind of? Mm from from being folk style for me that's what i'm gonna do but it's, it's gonna be going furry once i go furry oh gosh i'm never going back and people are gonna some are gonna hate it and some there are gonna go. love it oh that's terrifying normal <laughs> <laughs> don't go furry <laughs> <laughs> oh guns and roses double album ah got you all right so for 25 dollars, you're just getting the the compendium like the shorts compendium and then yeah that's kind of the, the best for you're getting the whole. squad yeah it's like 10 stories i think and that one includes um robozan and cave slave and a, a longer um earthbound one and the mask of red death those are four that i'm like really into and then, there's actually one that just i just call it the pickle short i don't know what if it has a title yet it might just be called pickle even if i when i make the title page for it but that one um it's like a, a kind of friend that i've made on twitter who's like an animation student and he lives in like thailand or something and um he he like asks me advice all the time and i'd give him like little like what the best i can so i, I almost like a little bit in the mentorship role which i've kind of been enjoying Mm -hmm. And he um, was off school for the summer. So I was like, do you want to draw one of these short stories? Because I'd had, that one was actually hard to draw. I'd gone through two artists that were having trouble with it because of the blocking of the characters. Because it's, there's like six characters and, and a lot of it's just uh, dialogue, conversation. And to, to be able to do that, like if you try and do it in perspective, it's like hard. Or So what I was thinking is like, let's do it pretty cartoony where you can almost have like characters heads popping off the edge of the frame uh, as they chime in, you know, like that kind of thing, rather than mm -hmm. having to like make sure everyone is like in the room. And if, if it was ever a movie, I've heard that's even really hard to do. And a lot of times directors will just, they just go, screw it. We're just going to put the camera right in the middle, have everyone in a circle. And I'm just going to shoot you from that direction as, as I can. But um, yeah, it's like the blocking, which is weird. Cause that's like a thing, like when you think of, uh, cinematography you think of like where you put the camera and that's like very important and it's important in comics too but blocking is where all the props are all the characters are it's like if you're playing with barbie dolls or dolls or legos it's like where you put the blocks you know and that's yeah. equally important as cinematography and it, you'll find times when it becomes an extra challenge so for this pickle short the blocking was super hard but um my buddy uh his name's danny yeah he he knocked it out of the park and that one's like a real cartoony style but a kind of a pretty fun script and that's the one where the guy speaking of like what a short story can be kind of like that one doesn't really have like a twist per se mm -hmm. it, it just like it the the short story is he survived at sea for two weeks and he's gonna tell him how he does it but he he wants them to pay him for the privilege for kind of like this bet like uh, and um so you're kind of wondering because it's impossible to survive at sea with no food or water for two weeks how did he do it right and that answer you get towards the end of the comic and it's like is that a good payoff or not it was like it's not like it's super clever or anything but there is like a reason of how he did it and that is kind of fun for just like a short story is like you're answering a question basically right and you, you kept mentioning pickles. I had to show my pickle tug and pickle Lola because I think that they're fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I love pickles. Pregnant women love pickles. That's the pickle lore that I know. Is that? That's yeah. And ice cream. Yeah. Pickles that, and I get ice the pickle cream. cravings. Salt, uh, sweet and salty. Yeah, you know, it should have been a clue to me that I used to love strawberry ice cream and dill pickles when I was, you know, young. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's a good one. That's funny. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> uh, and then you've got your completionist. So what's everything that comes with completionist? Yeah, so this actually, you'll get everything I've published so far, which is seven books, which is kind of a lot. I've been in Comicscape for four years, but I had done some of these books before Comicscape. So like all this stuff I really started when I turned 30 and I'm 36 now. So it's like six years. So I've been doing like about a book a year. Um, all these books are about 120 pages. Do I kind of do thicker, thicker books? Um, and this will be the only kind of time for a while for people to be able to catch up on some of these books because they won't be add-ons on future campaigns till like maybe yeah like in a year or so i might offer some of these again so this is the chance to get like foreign agent or earthbound or nosferatu which is my one from earlier this year yeah so yeah there's some... there's earthbound by mine mine it's somewhere back here <laughs> yeah nice yeah, it's Earthbound Volume 1, Volume 2, Foreign Agent, Nosferatu, and then the two short story collections of this campaign. So that's six. And then the seventh book is my nonfiction one called Interactivity, which is like all about just interactivity, what I call interactivity, but it's like basically uh, suspense, mystery, paranoia, dramatic irony, all these things that kind of like you can identify as times when the audience has definitely got like a back and forth with the, the storytelling where you're like, I, it's interactivity basically. And so gotcha. it's like breaking that down and trying to talk about it kind of. Very cool. So that's a, that's a really good value for people who missed out on some of your earlier stuff and who also maybe want almost like a narwhal crash course in writing yeah <laughs> it, it, it's a lot yeah I, I was wondering because if if you got that in the mail so like for me sometimes it's almost it's too much and you won't read anything because it's like you got too many options so i almost want to be say to like start with earthbound i think probably it's like if you order this like read earthbound the second you open it from you know, the mail you tear into you see seven books in front of you and you get paralyzed by not knowing what to read first uh, just read Earthbound. That's the other thing. Absolutely. Well, that is, I mean, like we said, really straightforward, but um, you've got, how long are you leaving this up for people? It'll stay in demand until I have to order prints. So it'll, like into January ish, it will okay. kind of close. Um, and yeah, we'll see. It might inch towards that 40K stretch goal. It'd be cool to hit 40K. Um, this one, it's like, it's less backers than Nosferatu by a fair amount so far, but it might end by the average backer numbers higher because there's more books available. There's a fair amount of people. It's averaging, I think, three books per backer, which is actually pretty high. It's a pretty high mm -hmm. average. So it's, yeah, like, this is like, I think I have um, some people who, I don't know if it's like, Two, two or 300 people will kind of back everything and all the bonus stuff. And they've been doing it for, so they have all the sketchbooks. So some of them might not be backing this one. Um, and it's just a short story. So it's like, I don't know if the short stories are harder to sell, but it's they typically from what I've seen, short stories and anthologies are a lot trickier to sell audiences on because most people are wanting full complete stories that are, that feel like a journey and feel like you know you you spent your money well and when you do like we were saying when you do something like a compendium or an anthology there's so many other stories involved that there's a much higher chance that there's going to be stuff in there that you don't click with or you don't enjoy and so yeah. that makes people a little more hesitant to back totally yeah. not why i don't also have my anthology remotely ready to go or anything 
<laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, who don't know who's going to back it? <laughs> I know. It's like this one, it did help because I do have the some of the content was ready to go. So I'm like, all right, this is the next one. And then I was thinking of, of doing it like, all right, I could do it kind of fast. But now I'm getting more and more invested into it in spite of myself kind of because of the ro extra RoboZan work. And that is mm -hmm. going to be cool because I am looking forward to just offering that as a single book even in the future. And But I'm also like, yeah, the, the one after this, uh, I'm very excited for too. And that's Cerberus, which is the talking dog detective story. It's like reverse John Wick, where like if John Wick died and the dog survived. The, the, oh the my dog, gosh. The dog goes to get revenge. And that one, like another one where I'm like, oh, I hope, I hope that one does good. Because you never know, obviously. And that one's a little bit out there. Um, but that's a full like epic mystery story um and and monica mccagney drew it i just wrote it i'm coloring it um me and jared's helping me but um, i i need to see a picture of this dog because i need to i need to do fan art for this like i'm already there and it has to happen and monica's art is amazing so yeah i'll I'm gonna, send i'm gonna it, need you to just spoil a little bit for me <laughs> i will send you some because i'm on my parents computer so i don't have it on me now but i'll send right it Yes. Oh my gosh. This is, this, I'm really glad that we were able to get you on. This is, it's always fun having you on. It's always fun talking to you. And, you know, I've got to, I got to say for an anthology, you're, you're doing much better than most anthologies that I've seen. Oh yeah. A lot of them, if they hit 10 K, they're like, holy fuck, it's amazing. And you're over here like, hey, I hope we hit 40. That'd be real nice. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's true. And I don't have to split it. I'm giving bonuses to some of the collaborators, but, uh, you know, this is mostly just me. So I'm that's awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. Sai, do you have any uh, questions or anything you want to ask Narnar -nar before we wrap? Puppy power. Puppy power. Nice. nice gopher. No, I'm I'm really fucking exhausted after uh, after the last couple of days. So I'm sorry. I'm I'm really not with it. I'm trying to catch the chats and uh, and be engaged. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm about sleep. I'm about my limit. No, it's it's no. It's just sitting here with my uh, my hips, my legs, my shoulders in excruciating pain. Uh, so that's about it. Did you, did you catch COVID or something? Or no, I've been no, doing yard so I work. just hasn't worked out in a while oh, and has been uh, busting their ass out in the yard lately. So yeah, yeah. There's that every... balance of being sore. Sometimes it feels good, and you're like, "Yeah, I did something. Now I can relax, guilt free." But then well, I want that rest day. But but every time my my elderly mom wanders out into the yard, I have to head that shit off at the pass so that uh, you know she's not taking more spills uh, and. Yeah. She tried to cut down a palm tree branch with a with a bread knife and <laughs> slipped and smacked herself in the face with it and with cut the her knife. Nose. Yeah. Whoa. So we there's a lot of intervention. <laughs> then I <laughs> go to of, help like, her no, up. No, no. Here's the funniest part. Then I go to help her up by grabbing her around the the waist and trying not to give her the Heimlich. And she's like, "You grabbed my boob." I'm like, "That's like." <laughs> That's so far low for that to be the case. There was there was no real place to grab you at, except maybe like grabbing the the, the waistband of the back of her pants to try to lift her out of the <laughs> yeah. out of the flower bed that she fell into. And it's like no, because her pants are stretchy because she's old. So I mean that <laughs> that would not have gone well at all either. Sure that she's really happy you're sharing this. Story. I can see that as she like, doesn't watch us. It's fine. A, a, I know she like does. a manga comic or something. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I grab my elderly mom? Picture. Drag her out by the legs. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I feel. I feel like that is actually an anime series, <laughs> yeah. and it's a uh, uh, Okasan because that means mother. <laughs> like, there's an entire. An entire anime series that I watched for a while that's like a slice of life, but it's literally just a mom trying her best to like keep her kids in line and keep her husband like doing what he needs to for work while running a house and being an artist. <laughs> and like it's just constant shit uh -oh. like that. Like if I if if I fell in a flower bed, how would my kids help me up kind of thing? Yeah. 
So yeah, dealing with that plus uh, doing yard work that this house has needed for you know several years. Years, um, yeah. Since we might be trying to sell the house soon and uh, move a bit closer to Shea. Fingers oh, crossed. nice. Yeah, that looking at Virginia, nice. which is you know caddy corner to Maryland. <laughs> caddy corner. Well, Narwhal, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. And uh, really, I I think that I want to I want to back this. I know I haven't yet, and it's on my list because I really want to make sure that I don't miss out on this because I want to see how you put together an anthology. I'm using it as research. I'm oh, judging right. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, I'm excited to to put it out there and see what people think. Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be interesting. Uh, everybody, please share out Narwhal's short compendi- shorts compendium. I cannot talk. And uh, make sure that you back it if you haven't already. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's that's. Do you like the way I I titled? the uh the stream i forgot to mention that instead of narwhal shorts compendium it's narwhals shorts. <laughs> yeah so. i know a lot of people are like are you going to send your shorts with the <laughs> comics i'm like yeah sure That'll be a maybe show. a picture of you in your shorts yeah <laughs> look yeah. all you all you gotta Stretch do goal. is be like Stretch it's goal. uh that's an elite tier uh, yeah. for a mere yeah. four thousand dollars you can get a pair of my shorts yeah make make sure that they're spandex shorts too yeah that's funny. like bike no, shorts a good idea yeah after no, you no. go biking in them oh my gosh oh. thank you guys so much for hanging out with us don't forget to like share and subscribe to red valkyrie we will see you guys next time bye bye